Just Thank you so very much, Madam Chair. I appreciate it. And Chairman Takano, Ranking Member Boss, distinguished members of the committee, thank you for holding this bipartisan member day hearing. It's an honor to speak before the committee this morning. For most of my career, as you know, actually uh, for 14 years, uh, I served on this great committee and uh, look forward to one day being able to serve on it again. Uh, I've said it out uh, again, uh, I just want you to know that, uh, that I appreciate everything you're doing in a bipartisan fashion. I often found myself in awe of the sacrifices, obviously of our heroes and efforts that have been made on behalf of our great country. So we appreciate the men and women who have worn the uniform of our armed uh, services. And I wanna uh, commend uh, Congressman Davidson for his remarks as well. I wanna associate myself with his remarks. Uh, our veterans deserve uh, the care uh, and, and uh, veterans are still my top priority. I will continue to stand alongside the great work you're doing. One of my longstanding commitments towards our nation's veterans has been to rectify the unfair offset between the military retire pay and the VA disability compensation known as concurrent receipt. Congress has implemented concurrent receipt payments for some veterans since 2004, a policy championed by my father, Congressman Michael Bilirakis for many, many years, uh, but has, uh, has yet to provide, Congress has yet to provide it equally for every disabled veteran primarily due to uh, cost. Despite spending trillions of dollars on yearly budgets, we never manage, unfortunately, to have the funding necessary to make these veterans whole, and I'll continue to work on this. I have two pieces of legislation that address the concurrent receipt problem, HR 303, many of you are uh, co-sponsors, the Retired Pay Restoration Act, and HR 1282, the Major Star Act. I especially want to thank my friend and colleague, Dr. Ruiz, for, and he serves on the committee now, uh, for his support in co-leading the major Richard Starr Act, which focuses on concurrent receipt for Chapter 61 combat veterans. I urge the rest of the members of this committee to support this particular effort. And uh, if you will, we, we urge you to co-sponsor this bill. Another top priority of mine is providing access to care and benefits for veterans who have been exposed to toxic burn pits. I've been glad uh, to have introduced and supported multiple bills in this space in, uh, in past Congresses. And we don't care who gets the credit, we just gotta get this done. And this year, I'm proud to be an original co-lead on HR 2127, the TEAM Act, which comprehensively addresses toxic exposure now and in the future. I wanna thank Ranking Member Boss for his commitment to the TEAM Act and I urge the chairman, the chairwoman as well, to reach an agreement with the House and the Senate on this issue. Our veterans cannot afford to wait any longer for the medical treatment and benefits they deserve. I've also had significant feedback from my district's uh, veteran constituents uh, expressing their desire to add dental care to the VA's medical benefits package. Studies have shown that regular preventive uh, dental care equates to lower health care costs and better outcomes. For these uh, reasons, I will soon file the Vet Care Act, which would expand on this research to determine the potential health benefits to veterans with diabetes and the potential cost savings to the VA associated with the periodontal care, all through a four-year pilot program. I, I was grateful that the committee, through the help of the chairwoman, unanimously report the Vet Care Act out of the full committee markup last Congress, and I hope the chair will commit to doing so again. Lastly, I had the distinct pleasure in the past Congress to serve as ranking member of the Economic Opportunity Subcommittee, and I'm proud of the work we are doing, uh, and I'm working with my friend, again, Mike Levin. He did a great job as chairman. Uh, this Congress, I remain committed to improving the livelihoods of our nation's veterans and will be filing legislation to provide full parity of basic allowance for housing monthly uh, stipends for post 9-11 GI Bill veterans who are taking classes solely online. Now more than ever, we need it. The irony is not lost again on me as we sit here in this virtual online hearing and have done so throughout COVID pandemic, the COVID pandemic. 
I'll be finishing up, Madam Chair. Most students have also had to do this. And yet those veterans who had embraced online only classes prior to the pandemic were only able to access 50% of their housing uh, stipend. I want to rectify this. Uh, so anyway, uh, without further ado, I don't want to run over too long. Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me the opportunity.